Hi, I'm Claire. I teach computer applications technology here in Johannesburg. You know how your teacher always tells you to practice past papers? Yeah, that doesn't really help if you don't know how to do half of the stuff. That's what this is for. You'll find a link to the files in the description below, along with the table of contents, so you can just click straight to the question you need help with. We all learn the best from our mistakes, so please, you have to try this by yourself before you watch this video. Let's get into it. Firstly, you'll enable the content and we need to open the client's table. Now, the first thing you'll see is you get two kind of views with databases. Um, the one is that it shows in these kind of awful windows. I hate that. Um, or the other one is that it shows in a tabbed view. So if you want, you can change it to a tabbed view by going to File, Options. And if you look at Current Database, you can change it to Tabbed Documents and say OK. And then you just relaunch the database to have that effect. Now, if I open the Clients tab, lovely, it's got in, it's in a little tab of its own. All right, so we need to be working on the Clients table and change some stuff in the Design view. So we've opened the table and you can change to Design view either at the bottom over here or you can go and click and say Design view. So we're starting by changing the field size of the name field. So you click on name and you change it to field size 40. Then we need to set the primary key to a more appropriate field. Now, if you need to set the, pr the primary key, just look for anything that is auto number or anything that says ID or code or identification number. So here's an ID auto number. I just select that field at the top here. Make sure that the row is indicated that it's selected with a little yellow. And then you can click on primary key and it'll move the primary key to that field. Now we need to change the data types of a bunch of fields to more appropriate data types. And we'll decide what type will be appropriate based on the description. So international, we need to change. Uh, so I click there and I can change the data type over here. And the question in the description is, is the client an international traveler? So it'll be yes or no. The next one is notes. And it says there will be one page of notes. Short text will most definitely not be enough. So we'll change it to long text. And then we need to change the grading field. Um, and the client will be graded on a scale from 1 to 10, so it's numbers. Now we need to work on the properties of the birth date field. Firstly, the birth date is a required field. So at the bottom here, it shows the field properties for the field I've selected at the top. And I can change required to yes. I can either type yes, I can either, I can also just use the drop down arrow. Or if I double click, it rotates between the options in the drop down menu. So I can just double click and make it yes. Next, I need to dis, uh, change the display format. So the display format is this one, and it needs to be displayed as a medium date. Drop down, medium date. Next, I need to insert a validation rule. Now, the validation rule needs to prevent a user from entering a date later than the current date on which the data is captured. So the current date in Access can be um, achieved by using the function date instead of today, as in Excel. So today's date is allowed, but not any dates after that. So the validation rule will be that the date has to be smaller than or equal to, or less than or equal to, today's date. And today's date you get by using the function date with two open, an open and a closing bracket. I also then need to enter an appropriate validation text. So you need to describe the, what the question actually asked. If you're unsure, you can actually write exactly what the question asked, but I'll just say enter a date um, that is no later than today. 
Lastly, we need to create an input mask for the cell number field. And uh, we need to note that there are two spaces between the figures. All right, so to allow only numbers in an input mask, we will use zero, 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 zero. And to insert the spaces, for now, I'm just going to put a literal space and we'll see what happens just now. Zero, 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 space, zero, 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 zero. Now, the moment I click away, you'll see Access actually enters a backspace or a backslash, sorry, before the spaces. And the backslash means the next character will be entered literally. Right, we're going to save and close this table. Now we need to work on the form. So we need to modify the color of the form header. So I'm going to go to design view, click on the form header text, and I need to change the format to an orange font color. Next, I need to format the rate field. Um, pay attention, I'm not clicking on this side. This side is the label. This side is the field. I need to format the rate field as currency. So in general, you can um, just keep a rule for yourself if you're tr struggling to find the stuff you need on the ribbon. If you're working in design view, odds are you're going to need the design tab. So here I can find the property sheet where I can change the format to currency. Now I need to add a combo box in the details section of this form for the country field. Now at the moment, the country field is not present over here. Um, I can go to add existing property and actually drag it in. There it is. But I prefer to do this in a different method. Um, have a look, pay careful attention. So I'm going to use the combo box from the controls at the top here in the design ribbon. Or design tab and I need to say where it needs to be so I'm just going to click there underneath rate it doesn't say where it just needs to be anywhere in the details section and I'm going to type in the values that I want um, there has been a paper before where you need to get it from another table then you'll choose the top one but for now I'm going to type in the values I want and I'm going to type all the names then this step is critical if you want to use this life hack by just using that combo box you have to say in which field it needs to store these values this is the way you basically link it to whichever field you want it to be used so this needs to link to the country field so i'm going to choose in the drop down arrow it needs to link to the country field next what label do I want for it? It says choose an appropriate label. Well, obviously, it's got to do with a country land. Finish. All right, now if you want to double check whether everything worked correctly, if we go to the property sheet on the data tab, you'll see the control source is now country. The source type is a value list, and the row source has the different names of the countries over there. We'll save and close the form. And we'll open the 5.3 query. We need to modify the query to display the names of hotels and lodges that start with the letter S and has a grading of 9. With criteria in a query, always do one at a time. So hotels and lodges, here are the names, and I want to change it that it actually needs to start with an S. Let me just make this a bit smaller. So to start with an S, I will type in S and a star. The star is a wild card. It means anything can follow after the S. And the moment you click away, it actually adds like and the parentheses by itself. Let's go test if it works. Fantastic. It shows me all the hotels and lodges that starts with an S. Um, the paper then also asks that it that the these hotels and lodges also and needs to have a grading of nine. Now, if you put the grading of nine, see, do you see hotel grading over here? If you place it on the or row, just check what happens. 
it gives me either the hotels that have a grading of nine or the hotels that start with an S, which is not what I want. It needs to adhere to both criteria. Um, so it has to be on the same row. There it gives me the hotels that start with an S and has a hotel grading of nine. Save. If you press the top save over here, it saves the current open object. So you can just save and close that object. Now we'll work with a query 5.4. Right, there's loads of instructions. So let's have a look. Firstly, we need to only display the client names. Let's go in there and see. So the client name needs to be displayed, not the surname, the hotels and lodges, yes, nothing else, and then the date in and out. So let's take that off. And there's the date in and out. Let's have a look. There you go. Now date in and out displays hashes because it's not big enough to display. So I'll just double click and make them a bit bigger. All right. Now we need to create and display a calculated field. So I'm going to go to my design view and to make a calculated field, you will um, go to an empty field at the top here. And I prefer not actually typing it in there, but rather right clicking and saying zoom so that I have more space to work in. And I see better if I change the font to something bigger. So I'm going to start with the name of this calculated field, which is TOT and a semicolon space. So that's given this calculated field a name. And now I'm going to include the um, calculation. And the calculation is to just simply add the charges and the levy fields, but it needs to be written exactly as it is over here. So careful typing charges underscore poster and I'm including the square brackets to indicate that these are different fields. Very important. And make sure you have the spelling exactly right. Now let's go test. And it's actually added those two together. Fantastic. Lastly, we only need to display bookings when the whole stay occurs in October. So let's just check which year this is. These are all for 2014. So there's a date in and a date out. I'm going to say that the date in needs to be greater than or equal to the 1st of October. So the format in which you type a date is first the year, then the month, then the day. This format usually works. So if you click away, you'll see it adds hashtags automatically. If it doesn't, then you need to do that yourself. Otherwise, it's not going to know that it's a date. All right, so it needs to occur. The whole stay needs to be in October. So they have to be out by the end of October as well. So that needs to be less than or equal to the end of October, which is the 31st. And the moment I click away, it adds the hashes automatically. Let's check it. Yes, the whole stay occurs in October. Save, close. Let's work with query 5.4. 5.5, five, five, sorry. All right, we need to firstly sort the records alphabetically according to the hotel lodges field. It's that one. We go to design view, hotels and lodges. Check that you're always working on the right field. And in the sort section, we're going to choose ascending as regular alphabetical. Check that it works. Fantastic. Now we need to display the hotels and lodges where the rate or tariff is in the range of 5,000 to 7,000. So move to the rate field, there's the rate field, and insert the criteria over there. The criteria to achieve that easiest way is to say between 5,000 and 7,000. Uh, note that I did not include the currency symbol. There you go, the rate is correct. It also says, and an additional criteria, the hotels and lodges are not in Tanzania. Right? Which field contains the countries? There you go, it's called country. So LifeHack, just copy the word Tanzania, control C, and then you have it in the memory, then you can just quickly paste it and you say not, 
and in parentheses Tanzania. I just pasted that with control V. Let's see if that works. Yep, it's included all of them except Tanzania. And lastly, it says it only needs to display the hotels, lodges, country and rate fields, nothing else. So let me just take all of the other show blocks away. Oh, sorry, that one needs to stay. And I'm going to save, see if it works. And yes, it does. We can close. Now, I just quickly want to show you, if you've removed showing fields and you go back into your design view, you'll see it's actually deleted it. Um, if there weren't any criteria in it, that is normal. You didn't do anything wrong. You will get your marks. Lastly, we need to create a report based on the bookings table. So just to make my life easier, I'm first going to click on the bookings table and then I go to create report wizard. And you'll see because I've already clicked on it, it's already selected it for me as the source of my report. Otherwise, I would have just gone and chosen it from the list over here. I need to include the client surname, hotels and lodges, country, and the days fields. I need to group the records first by country. You'll see, do you want to add any grouping levels? This is the grouping step. And then I need to group it to by the hotels or lodges field. So there are two grouping levels. Next, this is the sorting order. They didn't specify any sort order, so I'll just say next. And they said display the report in landscape format. And then I need to insert a function. So before I do that, let's give the report a title. Please ensure that you type in the correct title that the paper asks for. Finish. Okay, there's my report. I'm going to close print preview and it automatically goes to the design view. Now I need to add a function. Let's just have a look at this in report view. Um, so there are the countries. So these are the hotels in Kenya. These are the hotels in Namibia and so forth. I need to use a function to display the total number of days there's the days field, booked for each of the hotels. So it needs to add all the days for the elephant lodge, all the days for the on route lodge and so forth. So I'm going to go to design view. Many ways to skin a cat. This is my preference. I open the group and sort command and I need to do a fun or do a sum or a uh, calculation on the hotels group. So I click on the hotels group here. I go to more. And I want to add a total. So I'm going to click on the drop down arrow here. Let me just quickly make this a bit smaller so that you can see what I'm doing. And which field am I working on? I want to do a calculation on the days field. So I click days. What do I want to do? I want to sum them together. And they didn't say where they want the answer, but I'm just going to put it in the subtotal in the group footer. I could also put it in the header. I'm going to put it in the group footer. And you'll see the moment I do that, it's actually added a footer section over here. Just make this back to the full size. So there, it's actually done my whole function for me. If you know how to do all of this, you could have done it by a text box. Um, but I quite like this because it builds it for you. They didn't ask for it, but if they did, if they asked for a label, you would then just insert a label now called total days and if you click away you'll see it has this little green error code and if you click on there it's you can just say it says it's unassociated it doesn't know what this label belongs to so you can just associate it with that label it automatically picks up these which if, um, text box is in this section that doesn't have a label and you can say okay and there it has a label no one's the wiser. It looks exactly the way it would have looked if you had done it in the normal way. Let's go see. Okay, it shows me a total for each of the hotels. And that's it. So let's see.